good morning, Riverlawn. Are you getting excited? It's time, it's time of year. I know we may be in many different places this morning. Uh, we may be in a stressful place. We may be in a, in a difficult, hard place. Um, but we also are those who worship a Savior who has come and is coming. We are a people of great hope, a, great, a people of great anticipation. And because of that, we come in joy and faith and love to celebrate, to worship our great God this morning. Uh, so we welcome you, those who are our guests this morning. We hope you feel right at home amidst family. Uh, we hope you join us for some fellowship following worship in our gym. And we most certainly hope you can join us Tuesday evening for uh, one of the most special services of the year, in my opinion, our Christmas Eve candlelight service. And just a reminder, uh, that is at 6 o'clock. Uh, years earlier, we used to have it at 7, so please make note that it is at 6 o'clock, uh, in case you're still thinking of that classic way of thinking, 6 p.m. And also, we are glad to have, um, you know, we have our choir, we have Aaron uh, playing the flute, we've got Mary Beth playing the piano, and we have our very own Pam Johnson, who's worked hard with the choir for our, our Christmas anthems this morning. Uh, so we're very, very thankful for that. Um, and we celebrate. We rejoice over that as well. So are there other announcements? Joe Lotus has one. This is not really an announcement. I just want to take this opportunity to thank everyone here who provided food for our food baskets, who came out and helped us set up and put the baskets together on Friday and then deliver them on Saturday. We did 21 families. We had lots of food, and everything went really, really well, and I appreciate everybody's help with that. Thank you all very much. We know it is a blessing to us, and even more wonderful, it's a testimony of the love of our God and the gift of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So we would ask that you please be praying for the families in need in this community, especially at this time of year, those who may have children or grandchildren uh, who may be going without this year. So pray that the Lord gives us eyes to see and hearts that are moved to serve and, and showcase his love. Um, are there other announcements? All right, let us now prepare our hearts as we hear the prelude.
everybody would please stand for our hymn, The Birthday of a King. Good morning. Let's prepare our hearts for our prayer of confession this morning. This up a little bit. And, and that prayer uh, is inspired by Isaiah 9 6. And Isaiah 9 6 reads For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Please bow your heads. Forgive us, Heavenly Father, for placing our hope other than in your Son, Jesus the Christ child, born and laid in a manger. He is the Good Shepherd who cares for his flock and our source of peace. His, his greatness will reach the ends of the earth. Let us now take a few moments for silent reflection and prayer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Now let's receive this assurance of forgiveness. And it comes from 1 Thessalonians 5.23. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We rejoice for the God of peace has cleansed us, we who are in Christ, through and through. The promise is that our whole being, spirit, soul, and body will be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We rejoice then and give thanks as we who have left our former lives enslaved to sin be behind us are now set free and free indeed. Amen.
Do we have children? Come, come, come. Have a seat. Got one? You go for the big chair. Maybe you better move. We're going to have to rethink this decorate. <laughs> Anywhere you like, Tesla. You have room for it right there? Well, that's nice of you. He's got room for you right there. Look at that. Thank you. So, guys, this is the big week. What's going to happen this week? It's Christmas. Christmas. Yes, it is. Are you all excited about that? Is anybody not excited? Well, you know, Christmas is a big deal in our lives um, some, for a lot of good reasons, right? But do we know why we really celebrate Christmas? Jesus' birthday. Jesus' birthday, that's right. You know, if Jesus hadn't had a birthday, we wouldn't have Christmas. That'd be sad, wouldn't it? But there are other things that Jesus brings to us this week other than his birthday. He brings presents. You got, he does bring presents. And really, Jesus was the best present that we ever were given. Who gave us Jesus? God gave us Jesus. Because Jesus is God's son. Right. So... You know how we get ready for Christmas? We put up a Christmas tree, we buy presents, we do all those things. Well, every Sunday here, we've been working, getting ready for Christmas, also by using our Advent sun. Remember that? And we are on the fourth week this week, and the word this week is the reason for Christmas. Why do you think God gave us his son? Does God, how does God feel about us? Nah. He loves us. He loves us. Yes, he loves us, man. And he sent Jesus because he loves us. He took my He took your word, sorry. <laughs> so God loved us so much that he sent us his son who took our place on the cross, who who did, um, he suffered for all the things that we do that are displeasing to God. Do you think that's a lot of love for someone to give their son to die in your place? That's a lot of love. So when we think about God's love, there's no greater love in the world. And you know the Bible talks about love. It says that God loves us. And the Bible tells us what Jesus told us, that we were to love one another as he loves us. Do you think that means we're supposed to love everybody? Yeah. Do you think there's some people that are unlovely? Yeah, there are some. But if Jesus loves us and if God loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus, then I think he's serious about us loving everyone too. That's a bad guy. He does. <laughs> Well, you know what? There are a lot of bad guys, but we're supposed to love them too, just not be like them. Sometimes that's hard, though, a little bit, don't you think? <coughs> so we've lit in some every week. How about we'll, uh, you want to put the word on our banner today? Stand up there. Let me get the word. Ugh. Okay, what's that word? Hold it up. Everybody look at it. Everybody know what that is? Okay, hold this up. And everybody say what that word is. Love. Love. Let's go right over here. There's one place left for it. We've had hope, peace, joy, and we're going to put that one right there. Mm -hmm. Turn it up like this. Yeah. Can you stick it right on that spot? Maybe down a wee little bit so it'll stick. How about that? That says, yes, it's the sun. It says, he comes. Who came on Christmas? Jesus. 
Yeah, we put the, yes, we put that all in there. This is like a royal blue because Jesus is the king, so that's why we made it that color. Did we do a good job? Well, good, thank you. So now, uh, let's see, who could light a candle? Who, have you lit one? Who hasn't lit one and did the thing? You haven't, okay. You can do one. You wanna do one, Sydney? You could do one too. We'll let, how about? You want to try? Well, we can light it more than once. The pink one was last Sunday for Joy. They're not easy to light. That's why we have Joe helping us. And you girls, we we'll to put you on the list for next year. How would that be? Actually, you can. You can light one. We're minus one because there's four today. Do you, anybody know what the big candle is in the middle? What's it for? It's for the Jesus' birth, and we do it on Christmas Eve. Christ can. Yes, very good. Tessa's going to light one? She... Okay. You want to do this one? Joe will help you. Very good. Okay. Let's have a prayer. You want to try to light one? We'll come here. Goodness. We can work this out. Yeah. Everybody has a Blue place in God's world. <laughs> Very good. Okay? Now let's have a prayer. Ooh. Whoever the decorator is, we're going to have to, I'm telling you, rethink this a little bit. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these children, and we thank you for your love for us. And we just pray, Lord, that they would know your love in their hearts. No greater love, no greater gift than your son, Jesus. And we pray in his precious name. Amen. And um, another thing we always like to mention uh, every once in a while, uh, following the children's message, we do have junior church for the kids who want to be part of junior church. We don't want them to miss out on that opportunity if they're interested. Uh, also, we continue to consider all the ways that our God has gifted us, all that we've received, uh, the life that we have, the love that he has showered upon us. And as we've considered it, as we pray that we continue to consider it throughout this season and all the days to come, let us come with our gifts of gratitude and joy and love. <laughs> Please pray with me. Lord, we come before you once again. Lord, we come with our hearts, with our minds. And Lord, we pray that we also come with the gifts that you have given us, how you have provided and sustained as you have fulfilled. And so, Lord, we pray that as we bring these gifts, it is an invitation, a reflection of how you've given us. Use these gifts to continue to proclaim the one who has come and who is coming. 
the kingdom that is breaking in. Lord, we thank you for your love for us, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we hear the, the anthems to come, I want you to see the, but how it's been titled today. Love will walk beside us. We hear many passages in Isaiah that point to the one to come, the promised one. And we read and hear in Isaiah chapter 7, Therefore the Lord will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child, and he will give him the name Emmanuel, God with us. For God will come. Love would walk beside us. Let's consider that this morning. Can you imagine what that would have been like to wait for that promise? Can you imagine hearing those words, Emmanuel, God with us? What it would have been like to wait many, many years, centuries, and to hear those words, Emmanuel, God with us. How strange. But to anticipate, to wonder, to dream, to pray. We've all experienced waiting. You and I have experienced waiting. Some kinds of waiting that we don't really like, that we don't look forward to. Others that are a little more exciting. Whether it's in traffic, I don't do well with that kind of waiting. I don't know if you do. Maybe at the doctor's office. But there's other times as well. Anticipating um, graduation. Anticipating a wedding. The children of God in the Old Testament were not so different from us. They had heard about the promised one who was coming, a savior, Emmanuel, who would bring light into this dark world and show them the way. They were waiting for the promise.
Each week during the season of Advent, we remember that Jesus comes. And Jesus has come. He's coming again. And he does so to bring us what we often take for granted and maybe minimize. But to ponder what it means to have hope and peace, joy, and love. That throughout the centuries, people have been preparing for this one's coming. In the song, Prepare Thyself, Zion, from Bach's Christmas Oratorio, Zion is told, and don't miss this, to prepare for the coming of the purest and the fairest, and to meet him with a heart overflowing with love. So remember those words as you listen to the piano duet. Prepare yourself for the coming of the purest, the fairest. Prepare to open your heart and that it's overflowing with love. And then while each of us here today is to be preparing for his coming, we must be preparing for our Savior's return. I hope we do not fear. We do not need to be afraid. Open your heart. Be ready to receive him. Wait for the light. The final anthem, a Celtic Advent carol, reminds us of this. But even more importantly, it tells us something. Jesus is coming.
In just a moment, we will have an opportunity to join our voices to the song with angels we have heard on high. Uh, but before we do that, let's, let's give thanks to our great God who has gifted these women and men uh, with the gifts of song, music. Uh, so for our choir, uh, for Aaron and Mary Beth and for Pam, let's, let's show our appreciation. We give praise to our glorious God, and we were able to not only give him that praise, but it brings us great joy, and it is a beautiful sound, and he blesses and grows us in it. So let us do that together. Let us stand and sing, Angels We Have Heard On High. Uh, we are so thankful that you have joined us to worship today. A uh, couple things before we enjoy some fellowship together. Um, I want to encourage you to linger uh, as the postlude is being played. So remain where you are and uh, after the blessing, listen. Listen in joyful anticipation of the one who is coming, of our great Savior. Take it in. And so we invite you to join us for fellowship following worship. We invite you again on Tuesday evening as we gather at 6 to celebrate our Savior's birth. 
uh, and is coming for us. If you have a need of prayer, if you want to know more about our life of faith, about our great Savior who is coming and is coming again, I'd be overjoyed to talk or to pray with you. And now receive this benediction, this promise fulfilled and also coming from Isaiah chapter 9. He, he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness for his people from that time on. And forever. And that promise is for you and for me. Because of our great king who has come and who is coming. Know this and be at peace. Amen. Amen.